Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. You know, the affirmation masters say that this is a vibrational universe that matches our experience to what we're vibrating. And because there are so many horrible things to look in the world, it's very hard to appreciate the contrast of what we would like to be and what actually is. And yet, based on the law of attraction, that which is like unto itself is drawn. Can we detach from everything that doesn't feel good? Well, not completely, but more of the time we can. And maybe you found, as I have, that the happier I am, the better things go. That's right. I tried not thriving, and it doesn't work. Besides, when you're thriving and you're feeling good, you can help out. When you're depressed and feeling like shit, um, you're lost in your own little bubble. So when you understand it's a vibrational universe, try to feel as good as you possibly can and notice that your good feeling is the point of attraction. It's like the magnet that's going to draw to you that which you want in your life. Um, so take that and put it in your pipe and smoke it. Today I want to give a little shout out to Clarissa Pinkola Estes, one of the female mentors for me, a Jungian psychologist and storyteller. Her book, Women Who Run With The Wolves, has been seminal for me. I've tried to turn every person I know onto it, certainly all women, to reanimate the story of the goddess in your life and make women the protagonists in all the stories. And then also for men to understand a little bit of what's going on in your mom, your grandmother, your daughter, your wife, your next door neighbor, and uh, everyone else who doesn't have the same plumbing as you. So the first thing she would say is, welcome to the fireside of healing. We've been sitting around the fire, huddling together in the dark, trying to figure out the mystery for millennia. And you belong to the tribe. What's the tribe? The tribe of the sacred heart. That when you understand this, you feel united, interconnectivity, interdependent with everyone and everything. But there's even more than just being in the tribe in general. You're also in the Scar Clan. And the Scar Clan is the acknowledgement that Life is a rugged process. Nobody gets through without getting wounded in some way. But the wound can be a womb through which you give birth to something. And so the first thing that she suggests you do is recognize that your eccentricity is really important to maintain. You're a square peg that will never fit into the round hole. And there's lessons to be learned for that part of you that's been disenchanted. It's as if Every vignette of your life, every twist and turns in the rip-roaring roller coaster that you have to face, which is life, is like a thread that you weave into the tapestry of your life. And then after a while, you get a finished piece and you take it off the loom and you put it to some good use in your life. And that's how you find out what wisdom is. Wisdom is what works for you. And your life becomes a kind of test to see, does this work or does that work? So you become a dangerous person. She calls this the dangerous old woman. You don't take shit from anybody. You protect the stuff that's precious. You stand in the aura of a person who's completely alive, yourself. And you don't let preciousness be harmed. You might be unpredictable and wild from other people's perception, but that's because you're spontaneous. You're not fixed in a rut. And you find out what's truest in the human soul. And you accept the fact, as you do in affirmation, that there's trauma in life, but you can turn it around. It's more necessary to see what's deeply beneath that. Being alive is heavy. There's no doubt about it. But there's also joy to be had there. There's also humor to be had there. There's also sharing to be had there. There's compassion to be had there. In other words, it's worth it to be alive, to find out the blessings in life, both to get them and to give them. So you have to learn to be assailed, as we all will be, and not be blown off course. And basically, the way to do that is you got to get a little hard edge. Like they say, a sapling, when it first is, uh, is born, it has to grow some bark on it. Otherwise, it won't stand that first winter cold, that, first, that frost, the thing that would shut it down. So you're a weaver of your own life, and the stories that you tell other people are medicine gifts. And the older you get, as I say, older people ought not to be aligning, lining up for medicine. They ought to be dispensing medicine in the form of their own stories. 
with creativity of their own life. So remember, everything that seems to be oppositional, adversarial, the tempests in your life, they're a kind of inheritance, a kind of legacy for you to use that are both complementary and transformative when you know how to do this. And I always like to say to all my female friends out there, women are almost always overqualified for any job that they apply to. So the future is female. Keep leading the world. All the intelligent and mature men are here to support you and help you. So pay attention to what's odd and unusual in yourself because therapy will become often a therapy of odd or eccentric ideas. And live as you're made to live and not as the uber culture dictates. Then you'll be a dangerous person in the most positive way.